Good morning and welcome to this pre-recorded service for Sunday the 25th of April 2021, the fourth Sunday in the season of Easter and also Vocation Sunday in the church calendar. We begin by hearing words from the New Testament book of Hebrews. Therefore, holy brothers and sisters who share in the heavenly calling, fix your thoughts on Jesus whom we acknowledge as our Apostle and High Priest. He was faithful to the one who appointed him, just as Moses was faithful in all God's house. Jesus has been found worthy of greater honour than Moses, just as the builder of a house has greater honour than the house itself. For every house is built by someone, but God is the builder of everything. Moses was faithful as a servant in all God's house, bearing witness to what would be spoken by God in the future. But Christ is faithful as the son over God's house, and we are his house, if indeed we hold firmly to our confidence and the hope in which we glory. In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my light, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love! Till he 
Let's bring our opening prayer to the Lord. Let's pray together. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Blessed are you, sovereign God, and may all praise and glory be to you for ever and ever. From the rising of the sun to its setting, your name is proclaimed in all the world. Lord, you have given your Son, Jesus Christ, as a light to the nations, and through the anointing of his Spirit, you have established us as a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. As you call us into his marvellous light, may our lives bear witness to his truth, and our lips never cease to proclaim your praise, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Forgiving God, you have called us to follow Jesus, to declare the wonderful deeds of him who has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. And so we confess in silence the times when we have failed to heed this call and to live up to our duty as disciples of Jesus. Lord Jesus, you have said to your disciples, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. That the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. And that you appointed us to go and bear fruit that will last. So holy God, giver of all mercies, cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And God our Father, Lord of all the world, through your Son you have called us into the fellowship of your universal church. Hear our prayers for your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry each may be an instrument of your love. All these prayers we bring in the name of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from Psalm 105 verses 1 to 6 and 39 to 45. Give praise to the Lord, call on his name, make known, am make known among the nations what he has done. Sing of him, sing his praises, tell of all his wonderful acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and his strength, seek his face always. Remember the wonders he has done, his miracles and the judgments he pronounced. You, his servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He spread out a cloud as a covering and a fire to give light at night. They asked and he brought them quail. He fed them well with the bread of heaven. He opened the rock and water gushed out. It flowed like a river in the desert. For he remembered his holy promise given to his servant Abraham. He brought out his people with rejoicing, his chosen ones with shouts of joy. He gave them the lands of the nation and they fell heir to what others had toiled for, that they might keep his precepts and observe his laws. Praise the Lord. In the church calendar, the fourth Sunday of Easter is always Vocation Sunday, and it lies midway between uh, the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead on Easter Sunday and the celebration of the sending of the Holy Spirit at Pentecost. The word vocation comes from the Latin vocare, which means a call or summons and indicates a strong feeling in an individual for a particular role or job. We often hear people say, don't we, oh, she's found her vocation in life. When talking about someone who has discovered what they may be good at or interested in or have a particular skill or gifting for, and they have set their life's work to following that pathway. 
Some obvious vocations that people follow are a monk or a nun, a doctor or a nurse, a teacher or a pastor. But anything can be a vocation when we sense that we are called to a certain role in life. The Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin Welby, writing of Vocation Sunday, says, There is no greater joy in life than to follow Christ. No greater adventure, no greater purpose, no better way to live. But following Christ does not mean that we always know exactly what to do and how our lives will unfold. Following Christ is embarking on a journey and listening to the promptings of the Spirit in prayer, in scripture and through our brothers and sisters in Christ so that we discover and grow into our calling. God calls all of us God calls all of us to be disciples and to be church, and we hold this call in common. But God also calls all of us by name, specifically, individually and uniquely. This is when we speak of vocation, the, sp the specific path that our response to God's love and grace will take in our own lives. The Apostle Paul, writing to the believers in Corinth, speaks of the church as Christ's body, where everyone has a part to play. He says, Now you are the body of Christ, and each one of you is a part of it. And God has placed in the church, first of all, apostles, second, prophets, third, teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, of helping, of guidance, and of different kinds of tongues. Of course, when we think of the life of the church, we realise that this is not an exhaustive list, but that there are many, many other roles which people may feel called to fulfil. Being a deacon of the church, leading a home group or a youth group, being involved in the music and worship or the sound and vision, administration, DIY, welcoming, uh, arranging flowers, hospitality, cleaning, and we could go on and on. Each of these roles needs someone to fill it for the church to function and for the body to work. But your vocation may also have a focus outside, uh, in the community, in social action, or pastoral care, or many other possible expressions of what we might call ministry, all of which the Holy Spirit will lead you to, something that will be life-giving for you and life-enhancing for others. So have you discovered your own vocation? The writer, theologian and Presbyterian minister, Frederick Beekner said, your vocation in life is where your greatest joy meets the world's greatest need. So what are you drawn to? What animates you? What will make you fully alive? Because such questions like this can be the starting point of discovering your true vocation. Vocation Sunday is a good time to consider what God might be calling you to, to ponder and think, to talk to others and to pray, remembering that whatever it may be that God is leading you to, he will equip you and help you so that you can fulfil your vocation and calling as a disciple of Jesus Christ living in the world today. Our Gospel reading comes from John chapter 6 verses 25 to 35. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life which the Son of Man will give you. On him, God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the work God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, 
to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written, He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly, I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray together. Holy God, it is a privilege to hear your word read, to own our own Bibles and to be able to study freely the scriptures. And as we turn to our gospel reading today, open our hearts and our minds. May your spirit guide us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. There is nothing quite like the smell of freshly baked bread. Uh, in my time before I became a minister, I was a civil servant and one of my colleagues also owned his own bakery business. Sometimes he would bring into the office cakes and pastries and freshly baked bread as a treat for everyone to share in. And although the office in which we worked was a large open plan layout, very soon the smell of freshly baked bread would begin to fill the place with its aroma. One of the tips if you are trying to sell your house is apparently to have the smell of freshly baked bread when prospective buyers come to view because the warming lovely smell of the fragrance is supposed to help them to look favorably on the property. In our gospel reading we have heard of the first of the famous I am sayings from John's gospel and the passage has been described as one of the greatest passages of the fourth gospel and indeed the New Testament. This account follows hot on the heels of the miracle at the beginning of John 6 of the feeding of the 5,000. If you know that story, you will remember that a vast number of folk were fed with just five loaves loaves and two fish and that each one of them had as much as they wanted with quite some uh, amount of scraps left over. After the miracle Jesus had disappeared sensing that the crowd came to uh, make him king by force and the crowd were unsure where he had gone and so, so set out to find him. Uh, they find this man who had satisfied their physical hunger in such an amazing way. Once they do locate him, it was not their physical need that Jesus wanted to talk about, but the more important subject, uh, uh, that of life, and nothing less than life eternal. So what was Jesus trying to say and do when he presented the people with this title? I am the bread of life. We know that the conversation turns from physical bread to spiritual food and Jesus tells the crowd that the only reason they are searching for him is because they have had a good meal. Yes, physical hunger has been satisfied, but for Jesus there is much more they need to know. And he encourages them to think not about food that spoils, as he puts it, but the food that endures to eternal life, revealing that, that God the Father has set his seal upon him to deliver it, rather like a goldsmith who imprints a hallmark on a piece of gold to show its authenticity, or a king who has a royal seal of approval. So it is with God the Father who sets his seal upon Jesus showing from where he has come and that he has divine authority. Q 
curiously, the people then ask Jesus, what miraculous sign then will you sh give us uh, so that we might see and believe it? What will you do, in other words? As if feeding over 5,000 people with five loaves and two fish was not miracle enough for them. Indeed, the people begin to look back in their history and to the story of their ancestors being fed in the wilderness with manna from heaven. Exodus 16 tells the story and says, In the desert the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt. There we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. It was a desperate state and it appeared that the people who had fought so long to be freed from their Egyptian taskmasters were going to end up corpses in the ravages of the desert, hungry and starving and after all that they had gone through to get to where they were. But God heard their grumbling and saw their needs. The story continues, the Lord said to Moses, I will rain down bread from heaven for you. The people are to go out each day and gather enough for that day. In this way, I will test them and see whether they will follow my instructions. The Lord heard their complaints and satisfied their physical need by giving them manna, bread from heaven to nourish and sustain them. Now, the Gospel of John is all about revealing the identity of who Jesus is. As the Gospel unfolds and there is the statement, show us a sign, the people fail to see that before them is the sign of what God is doing and will do. They are linking the manna from heaven from the history of Israel, a truly powerful display of God's provision for his people, with Jesus and saying, come on then, show us a sign, show us some proof. It has echoes of the days in the wilderness in which Jesus was tempted by the devil to do various things, one of which was to turn stones into bread to satisfy his hunger, as a display of the power of God in him and thus revealing his identity. What miraculous sign will you give then uses the same approach to test Jesus' will and to see if he will buckle to the pressure of the crowds to prove his own identity. And Jesus could have given another sign very easily. He had only the day before given over 5,000 people enough to eat, so the task was not beyond him. What he doesn't want to do, though, is to blind and stun the people with such a miracle, because that would detract from what he was trying to say to the people. That although physical food is important, spiritual food and uh, nourishment is even more essential. His answer to the question, what must we do uh, to do the works God requires, was simple, believe. You see, the people's appetite had been whetted in more than one way. Not only were they curious about the miracle, uh, the feeding miracle, but it was a popular Jewish expectation that when the Messiah came, he would renew the sending of manna for the people as a sign. What the people were doing here was comparing Jesus with Moses. The conclusion that they were coming to was that there was no competition. So Jesus had fed 5,000. Moses had fed a nation. Even though the miracle was fresh in their minds, Moses had fed the people for 40 years. And whilst Jesus gave ordinary bread, they remembered that Moses gave bread from heaven. As their argument unfolded, 
it was not until that point that Jesus corrected them that it was not Moses who had given them bread from heaven, but it, that it was his father who was giving them the true bread from heaven. Jesus says, for the bread of God is he who comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Those who are listening to Jesus have been sold on his argument and simply ask for this bread forever. It's a case that the people are thinking once again of their immediate needs, the physical and urgent needs of satisfaction for their stomachs. But then comes the first of the I am sayings and Jesus reveals himself to be the bread of life. All that has gone before in this dialogue is explained. Just as the manna mysteriously came down from heaven uh, to the people of God wandering in the wilderness so long ago, satisfying their needs, so the true bread from heaven came down from heaven, mysteriously in the form of a baby born to a virgin and is before them now. This is, if you like, uh, the commentary on, these famous, uh, in, on those famous and beautiful opening verses from John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, he was with God in the beginning. But what's the significance of all of this for us sitting here in the 21st century? We may not be physically hungry for bread, but what about spiritually? Are we hungry for spiritual bread? Do we hunger and thirst for the life of Jesus to be in every part of our lives? This is what Jesus was offering in his revelation to the people who had witnessed the feeding of the 5,000. He was not just offering satisfaction for a physical need, but the fulfilment of all human desires into eternity. Just as the smell of freshly baked bread inhabits all places, so the bread of life, Jesus Christ, wants to inhabit all areas of your life. Such is the love of God for you and for me that he invites us to share and have fellowship with his son, Jesus Christ, who declares, I am the bread of life. And it is a reminder of the sacrifice that Jesus gave for you and for me in death, his body being broken so that we might have life. As we close, listen to this quote from Mother Teresa of Calcutta, who asks the question, who is Jesus to me? She says, Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus is the victim offered for our sins on the cross. Jesus is the sacrifice offered at Holy Mass for the sins of the world and for mine. Jesus is the Word to be spoken. Jesus is the truth to be told. Jesus is the way to be walked. Jesus is the light to be lit. Jesus is the life to be lived. Jesus is the love to be loved. And so may you come to know more and more Jesus, the bread of life, who nourishes and sustains us in our lives. Amen. You were the word at the beginning, one with God the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation, now revealed in you, our Christ. What a beautiful what a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is, nothing compares to this, 
What a beautiful name it is, the name of Jesus. You didn't want heaven without us, so Jesus, you brought heaven down. My sin was great. Your love was greater. What could separate us now? What a wonderful name it is. What a wonderful name it is. The name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a wonderful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. What a wonderful name it is, the name of Jesus. Death could not hold you, the talk before you, silence the to bring our prayers for others today on this vocation Sunday and we'll use this response when I say Lord hear your people if you would say with me and answer our prayers and at the end of our prayers we'll pray together the Lord's Prayer let us pray Lord God and Father of all over all and in all and through all we give thanks that we are called to your service, and so may we, your people, be attentive and obedient to your calling. Lord of all, we give thanks that you call some to be apostles sent out to do your work. We pray for all who respond to this calling to serve in your name, for those immersed in the world seeking to bear witness to the gospel in word and action. For those whose service takes them to places where they find opposition and difficulty. May they be continually filled with your spirit and empowered to follow your calling. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Lord of all, we give thanks that you call some to be prophets. We pray for all whom you have called to speak out and proclaim the values of your kingdom. For those who challenge injustice and apathy and untruths. For those who campaign for the well-being of your people and your world. May they be continually filled with your vision 
and have courage in their prophetic calling. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Lord of all, we give thanks that you call some to be evangelists. We pray for all whom you have called to share the message of your love, for those who communicate the good news of Jesus Christ to others from a variety of backgrounds, for those whose enthusiasm and love conveys your truth. May they be filled with your love as they share the good news with others. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Lord of all, we give thanks that you call some to be pastors. We pray for all whom you have called to care for others through prayer and through service. For those who take care of any who are young or old, who are sick or struggling. For those whose work supports medical, social and community services. May their lives be channels of your love and grace. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Lord of all, we give thanks that you call some to be teachers. We pray for all whom you have called to encourage adults and children to learn and grow. For those who teach informally as parents, mentors and facilitators. For workers in schools, colleges and universities. And for those who teach in our churches. May they speak your truth and help others to grow in wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Lord, hear your people and answer our prayers. Lord of all, you have called each of us to serve you in your world and in your church. Strengthen and equip us by your spirit to recognise your call to us and give us grace and courage to fulfil that calling. Through Jesus Christ, our Saviour. Amen. And we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen.
And so may the boldness of the Holy Spirit transform you. May the gentleness of the Holy Spirit lead you. May the gifts of the Holy Spirit equip you to serve and worship God. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>